Hey friends out there in YouTube land, Rob here. Today I wanna to talk about the Mint TL70 Plus. But before I do, I wanna give you a look around this camera so you can appreciate the beauty and the craftsmanship that have gone into a line of cameras that span other formats, not just the twin lens reflex. The thing we wanna know about this camera specific and why the TL70 is important and what makes the TL70 Plus such a big deal is the fact that the original TL70 shot images on this kind of film. This is Instax mini film. The new camera, the TL70 Plus, shoots on Instax Square. We'll look at that just a little bit closer and I'll give you some kind of comparisons to the other one. There's also another major feature that changed the entire concept of how to photograph with the TL70. And that is moving from an aperture priority metering system to a completely manual metering system. Now, we'll see here on the side, that the TL70 Plus maintains left side controls with a shutter eject button that allows you to do things such as focus, as well as set the exposure, plus or minus one stop. However, everything that happens with this camera happens in aperture priority. This camera's aperture is set on the front, f22 all the way down to f5.6. It even has an adapter for neutral density filters. And the metering is not done through the lens, just under the lens. So if you were going to use the neutral density filter, you would take that into your calculation for your metering adjustment as you were photographing. We've even got a little <laughs> flash right here. There's a sports finder that allows you to look through and to close it, we can open up and see a loop with our ground glass viewfinder in there. Down here in the bottom corner, which you can't see because my finger, but down there is a little light, which will be red or green to let you know if your exposure is going to be correct. And there are framing guidelines inside the viewfinder so that you can tell if your image is going to be centered properly. All right, let's bring in the big brother. This is the TL70 Plus, and it supports the square format film, just like this. Okay, has a lot of the same features, but they've been upgraded quite a bit. We're gonna talk about those in just a moment. But for now, let's grab this guy away and notice the shutter button is not threaded. and immediately take a look that the shutter release down here is threaded. This is an absolutely awesome update that Mint has made. Now, when we look at this camera, we're gonna take a walk around too, but as I'm talking, just enjoy the beautiful craftsmanship. I mean, this camera really is something to hold, and I hope that it's coming through right now so that you can see it. It's an amazing piece of equipment to hold in your hand, and people love seeing this format. They like it when they get their picture taken out and about. And because the image pops up from inside the viewfinder right here, when you photograph someone and choose to eject the film to give it to them, it pops out of the camera. They don't even get to see it until you hand it to them and it begins developing. It's really quite amazing. It comes out right here and then you hand it over to them. Let's talk about this camera again. As we're looking at it, of course, mint camera, excellent construction all the way around. Let's talk about that flash. We've got that pop-up flash once again. The flash is hidden underneath the logo. There we go. And once you release the flash, the flash will actually change its intensity based on how close you're focused. Notice as I focus, you can actually see the lens moving inside the housing. So that's one of the things that makes TL70's cameras different than the traditional instant cameras that you would find from Fujifilm, is the fact that you have true focusing. Most instant cameras, not all, but most instant cameras actually are zone focused, which means you have to gauge distance. Here, you've got a scale, a distance scale, directly on the side of the camera. Right here. So you can set your focus not only through looking through the ground glass, 
but also use a very handy reference right here for your focus. It works great. We've got another control that you don't find on the TL70 original. And this one is actually borrowed from their RF70 SQ70 series. Now, I've talked about those cameras in the past and I absolutely love them. On this side right here, what you're gonna find out is we have an updated automatic function. We've got automatic, we've got automatic plus one, and we've got automatic minus one. And as you can imagine, those stand for auto plus or minus one stop of exposure. And then we've got a timer, bulb, and then everything from one second, half a second, quarter, eight, 15, 30, all the way down to one 500th of a second. Now both the TL70 and the TL70 Plus use a leaf shutter, which means that it can synchronize with the flash all the way up to one 500th of a second, which is really cool. If you were to use external flash, which you can through the external flash slave function of your flash, which is like your S1 or S2 priority, in this case it'd be S1, you can turn your flash on so that it will fire the moment that it sees another bright light. That's a pretty interesting thing. I've got a video about that on the original TL70 and uh, S, uh, RF70 from back in the day. Okay, continuing on around to this side once again, we've got a counter which will tell you how much film is left, and we've got our film eject button. Because our film eject button is separate from our capture button, our shutter button, we can take as many multiple exposures as we'd like, not a problem. On the opposite side, we have some neural backing that just kind of shows the, the inner workings that are in there, it houses them. And on the very back of the camera, we actually have where our film goes. Now, as you're looking through it right now, I'm going to go ahead and set the camera on bulb so that you can see. And we're gonna set the aperture in the front to f5.6. This is the aperture selection right here. I have a pre-production unit. So on mine, the wheel does not actually show the aperture that you're set at. The on-screen display on the inside does. Let's see if I can get that for you to see. Do you see this? There's f5.6 right there. If you can see it or can't see it, that's okay. It's in there. We'll talk about what happens inside here in just a minute. But for now, I wanted you to see what it looks like through that big glass screen on the inside. So three element aspherical piece of glass, and there you go right there. The five bladed shutter, and it's absolutely beautiful. Look at that, look nice and round. I want you to get a good look inside, guys. Okay, let it go. In this instance, I'm gonna also put it on one two fiftieth of a second for you, just for you to see how fast it is. <laughs> Couldn't even see it, I'll bet. Now let's go down to one sixtieth. Maybe you could see that. And let's go down to one fifteenth. Yeah, I know you could see that one. Okay, now that we've had a look inside, we're gonna close this up and give you the opportunity to have a look into the rangefinder area, the viewfinder area. I'm actually gonna turn this upside down and maybe I can get a, get a little more light in here for you, okay? Because it's upside down, you're gonna see the things I'm pointing at upside down. But over here, in that little area right there, that's where you have your heads up display. It's gonna tell you all the information that you need to know in order to photograph. When you're photographing in an automatic mode, it will even give you a selection for neutral density filters. Now, because it does not meter through the lens, this is only a suggestion. If you're shooting in automatic plus one or plus two, you could shoot in that mode. It'll say, hey, for this given aperture, we really think that you should use this neutral density filter that they talk about in there. Also, as we photograph, when you half press the shutter button, let me see if I can show you this. <laughs> it's right here. It will light up either red or green. Do you see that little light that turned on? You also see a small indicator, and I know that it's upside down, it looks like an hourglass. If you're above the hourglass and have shading, it's telling you that your shutter speed is too slow because you're going to be overexposed. If you're under the hourglass, under the center of it, I should say, it's telling you that your image will be underexposed. It's too dark. Kind of like an improvised match needle. And when it is correct, 
it'll be green. When you look through there, it will also tell you the mode that you're on, as well as, see if you can see it from the upright properly. I know that you, might be difficult. It will also tell you what aperture that you're at, as well as what f-stop, excuse me, as well as what shutter speed right in there. Okay, let's go ahead and switch the aperture so that you can see. You should see that switching. And as I change the shutter speed, you should see that changing as well. I'm half press and you should see it's still red. Okay. You may have noticed an additional element in here. I just pulled it out. There's your loop. The loop is specific. Let's see if I can get something in the background that you can kind of see as it heats up. On that ground glass, it brightens up. The loop allows you to just get a magnified view of what's in the center of the ground glass. It disappears pretty easily. And we can also press the forward in on the Mint logo in order to get, once again, a speed finder. Pretty cool stuff. But what if you wanted to use this camera with a neutral density filter? Mint does sell a neutral density filter kit that goes right on the front, just like this. Two, four, and eight are your neutral density stops that come in the kit as well as a close-up filter, which allows you to get quite a bit closer. I've gotten shots with the close-up filter as close as about a foot, 30 centimeters, 25 centimeters, something like that. And it really does improve all of that. And it's easy to put on and take off. The camera also comes with a lens cover, which attaches the very similar way. This is the camera right here I have so much fun with. And because it's fully manual, it allows me to photograph just like I would with any of my other cameras. I want to share with you some thoughts when using this. This would be my pro tip section. First of all, F8 plus ND8 is great. So whether or not you're using the TL70 or the TL70 Plus, if you have F8 set for your aperture and an ND8 and you're on an automatic mode, like automatic plus one or minus one or just regular auto, I find that this gives great results whether you're shooting the TL70 for the square format or the TL70 plus, I think I said the backwards, the TL70 for the mini format or the TL70 plus for the square format. On the Mint TL70, the original, the smaller one, if you were to get that camera, I would suggest getting the neutral density filters as a matter of course. You would need them to photograph. The reason being is that the meter that they used meters a much wider area than what the film is actually going to record. And that's going to give you a meter reading that can easily make your image too bright. So what I generally like to do is put my neutral density filter on the front in ND8 set the aperture to f8 on the TL70, and then set my exposure to compensation to zero. If I'm going into the dark, I'll set it to plus one. If I'm going into a bright area, I'll set it into minus one. In that instance, when we're using that automatic mode on the TL70, this guy, that's what we're talking about. When we're using that mode right here, what's actually happening is the camera recognizes you're in a bright environment. And since you're trying to game the system, trying to figure out how it's going to, to photograph, what you're doing is recognizing that the camera is going to use 1 500th of a second. So the neutral density filter at F8, 1 500th of a second, according to the Sunny 16 rule, will get you a pretty good exposure. If you're going behind a building in the shade, you can set it to plus one. If you're going into a really bright area, you can set it to minus one. Now, plus one won't actually give you any more um, shutter speed, but what the camera will be doing is when you go into that little bit darker area, it will automatically slow the shutter down to 1 250th or 1 200th. So by telling it to plus one, it will give you a faster shutter speed. That's what we're trying to do on this camera because we don't have access to its manual control. 
it's aperture priority, and we only have one stop, plus or minus, of exposure compensation. So we're kind of trying to hack the matrix, so to speak. It's a lot different when we talk about the TL70+. Plus. Since the TL70 Plus is fully manual, we can choose to shoot that way in any of the automatic modes, or we can simply meter and, uh, and shoot that way. We can just use a light meter and shoot that way, or we can shoot using the Sony 16 rule if we want to. The next thing that I would suggest when you think about using these cameras is the use of a tripod. The number one question I get is how do you use, how do you use either of them at nighttime? Well, you're going to have to use a tripod, and when you use that tripod with the TL70, you have to be very careful about setting your bulb exposure and using your finger to release the shutter and not move. So breathe out, get that natural pause in your breath, and then click the shutter. Click, and hold it until the image is exposed. With our TL70 Plus, we don't need to worry about that. We can attach a cable release, and then we can very carefully release the, release the shutter using the cable release while this is on the tripod. Both of these have a nice tripod mount at the bottom. And then we can get our nighttime long exposure shots. People also ask me about the reciprocity of the light at a long exposure, like what happens to the actual exposure, the film, the chemical process. Uh, does it have any issues developing? Do you get burn-in or latency or effects or things like that? And these aren't digital sensors, uh, which can have some of that happening because of processing, but these are chemical process films that develop. And Fujifilm has created a really good long-lasting process. This is a Di Sigma process or a Sigma. I forget what Sigma is. I, I read the I did a whole thing on it, so go check that out of the video. However, You've got about 30 seconds, 40 seconds before you start to have any uh, contemplations that need, or calculations that need to be taken for long exposures, which is pretty cool. You can get some really neat long exposure night shots. And if you're going to do that, then you could very simply use some strobes or flashlights in order to get some additional light and do some light painting to help light up the image that you're taking. Very, very cool. Final thing that I get asked a lot, and this is a pro tip big time. I, uh, I've gotten people tell me that they have a hard time getting shots with the TL70 and the TL70 Plus. However, most people will have a harder time getting images with the TL70 because of the way that it meters. Remember, we talked a little bit about how I get around that. And also, I generally only use the TL70 in bright sunlight. I wouldn't suggest using any of these cameras under halogen lights indoors at nighttime unless you've got the ability to control for flash quite a bit. And if you're gonna do that, then that means you're gonna to need to be using a smaller aperture and bring in more light. If you're gonna bring in more light, you're going to have to synchronize your flash with another off-camera flash that's set to the S1 mode, the Slave 1 mode, to trigger that flash to fire when its sensor picks up another Xenon flash is fired. It can get kind of complicated. So in order to get around all of that, Simply use the TL70 Plus. You're going to get much better results overall. You're also going to get quite a bit larger of an image. And I think in most cases, it's a more interesting image. I like the square format. Although, I like the TL70 too. It's all, well, it's all kind of what you like. When we talk about these cameras, it is important to know that these aren't cell phones. And I say this with all sincerity. They're not cell phones. They're not digital cameras. Many times people will get this camera, and I talk to probably 20 people a week about these two different cameras. I get emails all the time, and I'm happy to respond as I have time. I'm happy to help. But people will say, I can't get it. I don't like it. It's not easy. Well, that's the point. Photography isn't easy, especially film photography. And when you photograph with something like this or a Polaroid camera, you're shooting on film. And it's important to remember that that takes skill and time to develop. And if you've chosen to shoot instant film, you've chosen one of the most expensive mediums to shoot in the first place. So an expensive camera, an expensive medium, and expensive accessories, 
and people get frustrated. Why isn't it as simple as my iPhone? Well, if you want something as simple as your iPhone, get the Fujifilm Mini Evo. Great little camera, but it will give you nothing compared to images like this. They'll look good and they'll feel good and they'll be nice, but it's not the same thing. It's an enjoyable experience, but it's not shooting analog film through an analog capture. The Fujifilm Instax Mini Evo, this little guy right here, prints a digital image captured on a digital sensor. So if that's what you want, you could shoot that way and be happy. But if you want the thrill and excitement of nailing a shot on film, especially in something as tricky as Instax film, instant photography, well then you're going to love shooting with these. Now, just as a small aside, I want to share with you this, these are the size formats that we have. Okay. Let me move these to the different side right here. Okay. So, Polaroid Go Film, Instax Square Film, full size Polaroid Film. So, you're thinking this is your Polaroid now or one step two or your new polaroid i2 awesome camera fully automatic as well compared to instax square compared to polaroid go so full-size polaroid instax square polaroid go and the really cool guy on the side that we didn't talk anything about, but I'd love to do some more videos. I've done plenty on this. This is from the RF70, shoots Instax wide film. The camera is also made by Mint. So there you've had it. We've talked about this today, and I hope that you have enjoyed our conversation and discussion about the TL70 and the TL70 Plus. By far, my absolute favorite instant camera out of every camera that I have is the TL70 Plus. I've taken hundreds, possibly thousands of images with this camera so far. And my favorite thing to do is actually give away pictures with my card when I'm out at the park or doing something with my kids or down at the beach. Because when I have this camera with me and I start taking photos, people come over to see what I'm doing. Now, remember I'm a portrait and family photographer. So I'm down at the Virginia Beach oceanfront taking pictures of my kids at the pier or uh, swimming at the beach or having uh, lunch at, um, well, any place down there. I can't, Waterman's, I can't think of anything right now. Um, I don't go to Waterman's that often. There are a bunch of nice places you can go down there and you can spend a lot of money at Waterman's. But um, in any event, there are some local favorites. Uh, Rockefeller's is one of them. Rudy's is another one. Anyway, that's, that's a pro tip if you heard it. However, when I'm out there photographing, people talk to me about this camera and they're all on vacation. So I hand them one of my cards and say, hey, if you want some photos, give me a call. And oh, by the way, let me take your picture. So after I take their picture and hand it to them, they're excited, they're on vacation. I say, hey, next time you come or if you're, while you're here, I've got a $99, 15 minute portrait session. We'll get pictures of you at the beach. There you go. Just like that. It's that simple, Batman. That simple. Guys, I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey, it's real important to subscribe. I need some help. I'm trying to break 10,000 subs this year, so please hit that subscribe button if you found any usefulness out of this video. My name's Rob, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Bye for now.